everyone, and welcome to Total Packers with Matt LaFleur, Larry McCarron, along with the head coach of the Green Bay Packers. And Matt, after the Jets game, you said you were going to take a good, hard look at everything. What'd you find out? Well, we're not coaching good enough, and we're not playing good enough. And certainly, you know, from an offensive perspective, obviously it was a very choppy game. We got behind the sticks way too many times. Had too many costly uh, negative plays or and or penalties. Um, definitely got to block better. Uh, that's a good front, but we, we can do a much better job up front. And then defensively, for two and a half quarters, it was really good. And then, you know, the Jets got some momentum, had a couple big plays, and then uh, it was disappointing to, to end the game with such a long drive um, with them just running the ball. But I was proud of our guys' effort when they got inside the five yard line. I think we defended like eight plays inside the five and we didn't let them in the end zone. So that was a positive takeaway from it. And then on special teams, we just got to be more consistent. You know, you can't give up the block kicks. Those problems that you just mentioned, fixing them, is it a matter of physical work, mental approach, attitude? How do you go about fixing them? I think all of the above. I think we got to make sure we get back on the practice field and be very intentional about what we're asking our guys to do. And they got to be mindful of their work as well. Um, but collectively, coaches, players, all of us, we, we, we got to figure this out. You mentioned the offensive line, and it pains me to say it, but it wasn't good enough. Are changes in order? Uh, potentially. I think everything's on the table, and um, you know our goal is always to get our, our top five guys out there that can go out and compete together. And um, you know it just wasn't it wasn't up to our standards. One of the reasons for a lack of offensive rhythm, I think, were some drops. Now one or two they happen, but when you get more than that. Does it say anything? Does that show a lack of focus, concentration? What do you think? Yeah, I, you know, there were six of them, I think, recorded drops. Um, yeah, no, we got to be better. I, listen, it was rainy for both teams, and you, you got to deal with the elements. That's part of it, and we got to be better. 41 passes to 19 runs. I'm sure you're looking for better balance than that. Yeah, absolutely. We were. And then, you know, you got to the fourth quarter. It was a two score game, and we just kind of abandoned everything at that point. And it was a lot of short, quick passes, but certainly got to do a better job of, of getting the runs called and then going out there and executing. Matt, you've gone a couple games now without a takeaway. Short fields are a great remedy for whatever's ailing an offense, are they not? Absolutely. Uh, we got to do a better job of that. You know, we haven't won a game where we haven't caused a takeaway so, or a turnover. But um, got to do a much better job with that. And I did think from a defensive perspective, our guys were making plays on, on some balls in, in the passing game. That uh, coverage was much tighter. Um, and so that, that was exciting to see. Down to down, there were a lot of good things defensively, but they did break a couple big plays on you. And then there was that drive at the end of the game. Overall, how would you rank that unit's performance? Well, the first eight drives were outstanding to only give up three points. I think there was five three and outs there, and they were in some bad situations defensively in terms of um, New York's offense starting on the plus side of the 50. And we had a fumble on like the 30 yard line, we get a, a field goal blocked. Um, so the sudden change defense was, was really good. Um, and the, it was really good and consistent throughout those first eight drives. It's just once the Jets offense gained some momentum, we had a hard time stopping them. You had Ja shadowing Garrett Wilson at least some of the time, seemed to have good results. Might you be playing that kind of style of defense more in the future? Well, I think it could be game plan to game plan. Every week's an, a, a new game plan, and we'll see where it goes. The blocked punt in particular, was that a matter of a mental error or a physical getting beat type situation? Uh, it, was, it was definitely a mental error. I mean, we had uh, the guy that blocked the punt, we had him blocked, and we let him go. So that's something that we cannot do, obviously, um, you know, and, and we'll get that corrected. Thank you, Matt. Coming up, Packers record-setting tight end, 
Robert Tunyon. Stay with us. You have played quarterback, wide receiver, and tight end. Now, if you could play any one of them, would it be tight end? I, I think it would be tight end. Other than uh, quarterback was fun, I might be better than Aaron, but <laughs> I think uh, tight end would be, that's my position, that's my calling. Total Packers with Matt LaFleur is brought to you by your local Chevy dealers by Bell and & Health, and by Johnsonville. Welcome back. This one-on-one -on -one is brought to you by Quick Trip and Guaranteed Fuel. You know I'm a beast. I'm a beast. I'm a solid all-around player. He approaches it the right way. It's a weapon for the Packers. He's very critical of his own game and always trying to improve. It's awesome to see guys that work hard get rewarded for that hard work. You know I'm a beast. He lost it over the middle. Touchdown! Bobby Tunyon over the middle. Robert Tunyon just set the franchise record for most receptions in the game by a tight end with his 10th. Hey, you know I'm a beast. Bobby, 10 catches. The most ever by a Packers tight end in a single game. Does setting the record mean a lot to you? Any production means a lot to me. Any way I can you know, help move the ball or help the team. Uh, I didn't know until after the game in the media, so that was kind of cool, you know, coming off an injury and you know, busting my butt this offseason to get back and play. Uh, just a, as another little goal to like, kind of mark off. The longest of the bunch, a 16-yarder, came on a play that went off schedule. Could you talk about what it takes to have that kind of chemistry with Aaron Rodgers, that you're the guy that comes up open? I think it's just more so, yeah, like you said, the chemistry, but the reps, um, all those scramble drill reps that you have in practice and in the film room and where he sees players being and where he wants you to be, just kind of trusting him and him trusting me to uh, get an open pass. Away from the man, rolling right, goes right sideline. He's got Tunyon coming back for it. You came back to start against the Vikings in the season opener. Was that real important to you? It was just more important to get out there with my team because I know obviously the work that we put in together and you know with Sadie's we've played the last you know four years together so just getting out there and letting the guys know that I'm fighting to get back and want to be back so bad. How good I was feeling and the guys around me supporting me and encouraging me it was time to get on the field. You mentioned Sadie's. What's it like playing with him? I mean, I'm so grateful. People don't have the, those types of vets in the room, and I've had them ever since I've been here. Uh, I was new to the position, and what better person to have than someone who does it across the board the right way and the best for years. And he knows where I want to be at uh, now and in my future, so him holding me to that standard and uh, me being a young sponge, like, it, it's, a, it's a perfect yin and yang. Is playing tight end kind of cool? Over the years, I've kind of learned, you know, the run games and art in the past game, you know, like you're saying, it's the fun stuff, but being a complete tight end and being on the field at all times and being, your position is so critical at all points of the game, it really made me respect the tight end position even more. And now that I'm going into that position and this type of player, it's great to just take on all that commitment, sacrifice and all that, just, you know, to get the ball moving for the team. You have played quarterback, wide receiver, and tight end. Now, if you could play any one of them, would it be tight end? I, I think it would be tight end. Other than uh, quarterback was fun, I might be better than Aaron, but <laughs> I think uh, tight end would be, that's my position, that's my calling. If you ask me, the Packer offense is at its best when Bobby Tunyon is catching touchdown passes right down the seam like you caught against the Patriots. Do you feel like you got a feel for that route? How do you feel about that route? Just a lot of people aren't willing to go over the middle necessarily and take those hits or whatever it could be. Uh, you know, there's a lot of commotion going over there and uh, some quarterbacks don't even like throwing over the middle. So to have that connection with Aaron and for him to trust me knowing that I'm gonna go up and get it by any means and take a hit over the middle, um, I mean, I'll take that. Would you agree with this? In times of trouble, the best thing any one player can do is his own job well. 
Yeah, I mean, doing your 111th is obviously what we you know stand for. Uh, but you know, just trusting each other, trusting that every person is going to do their 111th, and then, like I said, just executing those big plays when the opportunities come. Left it over the middle, touchdown! And Robert Tunyon ran a great seam route, and Aaron Rodgers dished him a strike. This week's Chalk Talk is brought to you by Network Health. At Network Health, we do what's right, even when it's not easy. It's who we are. Health insurance is what we do. Jair Alexander speaking on the Friday prior to the Jets game. I think with this game plan we got here, it's, it's pretty flawless. So um, a lot of adjustments were made and uh, you know, it's, it's just time to execute now on our end. That game plan had Ja traveling with Garrett Wilson, 10th player picked in the draft, and the Jets' leading receiver. Watch Wilson. Shaking, bacon, and faking, and Ja is buying none of it. Skin tight, suffocating, in your face coverage. Pass broken up. Same matchup, and this time, focus on Ja. The fake jam, and that has Wilson working a swim move against air. And I noticed this even when Ja was in college. Sometimes it looks like a receiver has a window of opportunity. But when the ball arrives, that window of opportunity gets slammed shut. Wilson finished with one catch, good for eight yards, and not even that one catch came against Ja. And if you want to see a picture of complete and utter frustration, check out Wilson. No win, so no game ball, but if I had one, I'd give it to Ja. He just went out there and he competed every play, and he was challenging, contesting. I was super proud of his performance. Broken up incomplete. Great play, Jair Alexander. Jair loves this kind of coverage. Total Packers with Matt LaFleur is brought to you by Network Health. By your Wisconsin Toyota dealers and by Spectrum One. I mean, I've always knew it, that tomorrow is not guaranteed. Because just like that, in the blink of an eye, your whole life can change. The biggest thing I remember my dad and me growing up and playing football was making sure I went to every practice. You know, I loved football, but after I first got contact at the beginning when I was like eight years old, I didn't know if I really loved football anymore. But I did love football. And he made me go every day. He loved watching me so much that his biggest thing was effort on every single play. He's hit it sack! My dad, he was a you know English man who really uh, he knew soccer. He knew a little bit about American football, but not really. And I remember him critiquing me, and I was like, "That's not even what I'm supposed to do. What are you talking about?" Now he's hit and thrown down again. My father had breast cancer. 
which is a rare, rare thing for a male to have breast cancer. We had to deal with where we were, deal with what was going on and the inevitable, that we couldn't do anything to stop it. He had such an upbeat take on it and I just didn't understand how, and I think a lot of it had to do with, he was trying to make sure that I was doing what I love to do. Football brought us close together, especially in this time. And it's always been a thing that kind of connected us. Uh, just because it's not easy right now, doesn't mean you quit. I actually learned that my father passed away before we played the game against uh, the Eagles. I know my dad would want me to play that game, period. Just like those times when I didn't want to play when I was in Pop Warner. He drove me there, dropped me off, screaming and crying not to go to practice. He did that, and that's the same way that he would have wanted me to do that game. No, it wasn't just my dad, it was my brother, it was my sister, it was my mom, and you know all my cousins going through this as well. And being able to go out there and do something positive for them and get their mind off of it, you know, I, I thought I could provide that at least through the way I played. It's hard to stay strong when when, when you're hurting so hard. But sometimes you need to stay strong for the people that are going through it, that you're supporting and you're loving. Lean on people who are there for you, because there is people here for you. I'm here for you. The Packers and Bellum Health are featuring an exclusive hat for Packers versus cancer. Join the fight today and help the Vince Lombardi Cancer Foundation. Visit PackersProShop.com. The Green Bay Packers are already getting into the holiday spirit. On behalf of the organization, cornerback Jair Alexander presented a $20,000 donation to the Brown County Toys for Tots campaign. Jair has also pledged $23 for every toy donated to the program this year. This is a time where, you know, some families struggle to make ends meet. And, you know, what better way to give joy than to challenge the Green Bay Packers fan base to donate an unwrapped toy to Toys for Top. The Last Word with Matt LaFleur is brought to you by Construction Business Group and Wisconsin Operating Engineers. Welcome back. Time for the last word from the coach and Matt this week. You have the Washington Commanders who always seem to be in the news sometimes for football. And they are coming off a win over the Bears, but they will be without quarterback Carson Wentz. Yeah, well, Taylor Heineke is uh, a really good player. And uh, we saw him last year, and he caused us a lot of problems. He's a very mobile guy that we're going to have to do a great job with our rush lanes and not allow him out of the pocket. And they certainly have a lot of weapons offensively uh, with Dotson and McLaurin. And, and defensively, it's one of the best defensive lines in football. So it'll be a great challenge for us, and, and our guys are going to be ready to play. Matt, thank you. Good luck against Washington, and thank you for watching. Until next time, take care.